telescopic rods, a hinge extender, ring segments, etc., etc. This may look like a bunch of pins, wires, nuts, and bolts to you, but to over one million kids all over the world, these metal parts are the key to fixing all kinds of different bone problems. When this pile of stuff is put together, it becomes an Ilizaro device. And a lizard. And a lizard what? In the Lazarov, it's a device designed by our featured explorer, a Russian doctor named Gavriil Lazarov. In 1947, while working in a small hospital in Kurgan, Siberia, he got the idea of how to treat severely shattered bones with a fixator. In 1951, he made the first apparatus out of metal scraps. He tried it out on a patient who had a short stump of bone in a leg. After he attached it to the patient's leg, he took some time off and went on vacation. When he returned, the patient's stump had grown. He had discovered a way to make old bone grow like new bone. And that fixator is what we today call an Ilizarov. Wow, that's amazing. So is it Ilizarov or Ilizarov? Regardless what it's called, it's a brilliant invention. Today, doctors everywhere use it to heal fractures, lengthen bones, correct bone or soft tissue deformities, and to fill in gaps. Just looks like something your dad would bring home from the hardware store. Very funny. Well, since you're so smart, why don't you tell us how it works? Let's ask one of our docs. This guy's an expert. Off the field, he's an expert on bones. But on the field, he looks like he's trying to break a leg. Great practice. Oh, thanks very much. So, pretty cool. A soccer playing doctor? Well, I guess that's right. When I'm not playing for the old Buzzard Football Club, I'm an orthopedic surgeon specializing in musculoskeletal problems for children. Hey, like cases that involve an Ilizarov device? That's right, including Ilizarov. Let's get cleaned up and go inside and talk about it. Okay. So, tell me how all these parts fit together to lengthen a limb. Well, first of all, an operation is necessary to secure the apparatus to the limb. So at surgery, what we do is pass the wires or pins through the skin and muscle to the bone and then attach them to the stainless steel rings. After we've connected the rings to the bone, we have to cut the bone at surgery. Now the rods connecting the rings are special. They're designed to be lengthened, kind of like a telescope. So this is the cool part. After surgery, we tell the patients to turn a nut on the rods four times a day, which lengthens them about a millimeter. And what that does is where we've broken the bone is gradually pull the bone apart. Now our bodies are programmed to automatically heal broken bone. So they try to heal that broken bone where that gap is forming as we turn the nuts and distract and pull the bone apart. So we have the patient keep turning it until we've got the desired length and the gap and the bone fills in. Whoa, that's cool. What about all your muscles? Do they grow too? Yes, your muscles, skin, nerve, blood vessels all grow. So let me get this straight. You actually break someone's bone to make you grow? That's right. Does that sound strange to you? Hey, whatever works. So the Ilizarov was pretty incredible, but not everyone thought so. No one took the professor seriously until Valerie Bruno broke his leg. Who was Valerie Bruno? And why is he so important? Well, he was a famous Russian Olympic gold medalist. He broke his leg in a motorcycle accident a year before the 1968 Olympic Games. He thought he'd never be able to compete in the 68 Games. So, what did they do? Well, they called in Ilzarov, who treated him with his new technique. They stretched his bone to create a new ankle for Bruno. A year later, he high jumped six feet, 11 and 3 fourth inches. So, Ilzarov was a real genius. You could say that. So, just how long can you stretch a bone? Dr. Birch told me that they can stretch a bone two to three inches a year, or even up to five. I guess you could say they go to great lengths to help their patients out. Ha <laughs> well, what's next? Well, we're going to meet some kids who have gone through the surgery. Take a look. When I was born, my foot was bent up against my leg and turned sideways. We don't have any answers for it. The doctors don't know why. And over time, my leg just grew slower. And, you know, when I finally 
came to a stopping point in growing, it was two and a half inches difference. We've been talking about doing a lizard off since, gosh, for a long time, probably about like I was six or seven years old. I don't even remember talking about it. I was real nervous at first. I went home and bawled my eyes out first night, but then after that I got over it and I was really excited that my legs were going to be even. I was going to have even legs and it was going to be really cool for me. I have a lot of experience with it. The information I have can help other patients to, to be more informed better than I was when I first came in. My leg was four inches difference between my right leg and my left leg. When I was born, I had a short femur and a short tibia in my right leg. And when I was 11, they decided they wanted to do surgery on my leg. And they introduced me to this little gadget here. And so, went through it. Um, first day after surgery, that, that's, that's rough. They want you up and out of bed now did you get a lot of support from your friends? They helped me with everything. If I needed something, they were always there. If I wanted to ride to go somewhere, they were there to pick me up. Don't be afraid to ask for help. It's a big thing. Don't be afraid to ask your teachers for help. They tend to give you extra time to get to class if you need it. Is there a lot of pain involved in this procedure? It hurt. I give it that. At the very beginning, very first time I ever got it on, didn't know what it was. It scared me more than anything. First day out of surgery and you don't want to get up, you hurt, You're, you get, finally, after a night of the nurses turning you every two hours, you get to the point where you're comfortable and then they come in and say, well, we want you up and on crutches. And you're like, This is no. the basic principle. The bone is cut here. I had already been prepped for it, you know, most of my life. There wasn't really anything anyone could do to prepare me more for it because I, I knew exactly what was going on and exactly what was going to happen and you know they even told me what they were going to do during surgery. Now I heard that um, patients do walk with it on but is that painful to walk with it? People have told me that it hurts when you walk but it's real important that you walk. I mentioned physical therapy earlier. Uh, weight bearing helps the bone to heal. so. It's one of the things we certainly don't want you to stop doing. How much does this thing weigh? It weighs probably between three and five pounds. Depends on how many rings you have attached. But obviously, if you were carrying a three to five pound weight around in your leg, you are gonna feel a little off balance for a while. Doesn't that put a lot of pressure on your knee? Yes. And your knee is actually a very susceptible joint when you have this on your lower leg. That's one of the reasons you have to be so careful in doing your exercises, and doing them correctly, and walking with crutches. In the physical therapy department, you will have measurements taken of your range of motion, and you will also have a chance to practice with a pair of crutches. I don't think the crutches have been a big problem for me. I've, I've been on crutches before, and it was no big deal. I am pretty okay with it. I can maneuver around pretty good. After surgery, the exercises will help keep your leg muscles strong. Push back again. Push, push. And in the physical therapy, I have a, a series of exercises that I do. I have quad tightening to strengthen the quads so that you are able to move around. Push. One, two. I have to do straight leg raises. And that just, it also strengthens the leg so that you know, you're just not like, you have a vegetable leg, you can't do anything with it. And then I have to roll her over on my back and I have to do hamstring curls and what they call glutes is just your, your foot is bent or your leg is bent up and you just push up and that, that strengthens your booty muscle. And then I have to go over, I have to walk a little bit every day on the parallel bars. Sometimes I do stairs, sometimes I don't, I just have to walk up and down the stairs to and what that does is it stretches out my leg and it also tightens, it tightens the quad because I have to bend it to get down to the next step. On your first visit back, they'll come in and they'll send you to x-ray and they'll go in and they'll take x-rays of your leg or your arm, depending on where you have it. I'm do your x-rays today, okay? Uh, up late with numbers, a scanogram, and we'll be taking the film so that the doctors can calculate the leg length discrepancy. They put me down on the table, they put like 
some scan thing with a whole bunch of numbers on the table and then they, um, the table. they set my feet out straight out and they put a block under my left foot to show the difference. It's about two weeks after you have surgery. They'll come in, they put you in kind of weird positions to take their x-rays because they got to see what they want to see. I like to play a lot of sports. Am I still going to be able to do all that stuff? When I first got the Lazara phone, I didn't think I could do any ac activities or anything like that. But now I could play. I could play basketball. I can play golf. I can play volleyball and all the fun stuff that just about everybody else can play. After a while, it feels like a part of your body. I can even ride a bike. A lot is going to be demanded of her during this procedure, and we want her to understand that going into it. You and your family can talk to a counselor before you decide to have the operation. This is just so everyone will realize that it's a pretty big commitment. Have you heard a little bit about what's required afterwards, after the surgery's over? There are going to be little things that you have to do all day long. And for a busy teenager, that can be, can be kind of disruptive. And how about stress? How does she do with stress? I think I'll do OK. I've got a lot of. When you leave the hospital, you'll have a lot of responsibilities ahead of you as far as taking care of yourself. You can expect to wear the Ilazara for about six to nine months. It does take commitment. You have to commit yourself to the daily routine of cleaning your pens, doing your exercises. If anybody, if, if you ask me if I should tell you to do this or not, I would say yes. Um, not just for the physical, but for the mental effects it can give you. People, they're real curious, and I can understand. I mean, if I saw someone, if I had never seen this before, and I saw someone walking down the street with this on, I'd be like, oh my gosh, what in the world is that? So I get a lot of questions, and I just tell them straight up. Um, you know, what happened when I was little, um, why it's like that, and what it's doing. As you can see, even though you will have a whole team of experts working with you, it's still up to you to do what you're supposed to do, like keep the pin sides clean and turn the nuts and wheels. I, ca I can't even imagine what a six inch difference in my legs would have been like. Um, just walking around was tough with four inch difference, and with six, uh, I don't know, it would have been different. So thanks to Gabriel Lazarov's idea that breaking a bone would make it grow, he has changed the lives of people like Sarah, Sim, and Jeremy. Remember, some of the most unusual ideas are the best ones. Until next time, keep exploring. Mm -hmm.